John Bowden from Rock History Music. How's everyone doing tonight? What we did with Jason Chef last night is we decided to start our series with Jason by releasing a video live where I basically come on and I play you the video while I'm chatting with everyone. I thought that might be a good way for us to roll out interviews so that you can also talk to us. Um, as mentioned on our sister channel, Rock History Book, today that we talked to Steve Fawson just before we get going with Randy. And Steve uh, is a very forthright gentleman as far as talking about heart. He's very honest. Uh, uh, um, Michael DeRocher is like that, or DeRossier as we say in French. He was very, very um, open about the future of any reunions, which at this point looks kind of bleak. And very big on talking about, by the way, the fact that Hart was a band. It wasn't just two sisters, even though the sisters were huge and maybe wouldn't have been a big, obviously, without Anne and Nancy Wilson. So just to let you know, um, we're working on that. And when we put that series up, we'll do it live like we're doing this. Our third interview with Richie Fure, of course, uh, Buffalo Springfield. You know, uh, Seller Hellman Fure, Poco. And now as a solo artist, and he's released a lot of stuff, it's Richie Fure, it's in the description of this video, dot com, where you can get on there and find out more information about him. And, and his new, the new album is called In the Country. Uh, Val Garay produced it. He's very, very proud of this. And we're going to talk about that in a second, as far as him being out there as a solo artist, which he's been for quite a few years. And, you know, enjoying himself as an artist more than any other time. Also, Richie looks young. Richie Fure, it's, you know what, some people age better, and there's nothing wrong with the way he looked before, but he just looks, he looks like the freaking Marlboro Man now. He just seems to be in a very happy place. It's not so much for Randy Meisner. Randy's gone through a lot of, he's, he's, he's had his, his addiction, especially with alcohol. And, um lost his wife you know i think she accidentally shot herself it was it was not a good thing but he talks about randy in this club we're just gonna wait for a few more people to come on and he has a lot of love for for his old friend he really really does and even though there's been a lot of um mixed messages about uh buffalo springfield yeah lloyd gruber thank you and thanks lloyd for coming on tonight Mixed messages about that first Poco album where Randy left Poco and later joined the Eagles because he wanted to hear the mixes of the first album and the fact that Richie Fiore didn't want him to hear them. Richie says he doesn't remember it that way. And Jim Messina, who was also in the band at the time, says that there seemed to be some confusion about Randy wanted to hear the, the mixes of the first album. So he just, he left after that. Came back for some reunions. But that was it. And never came back for any Eagles reunions. Interesting, the, the, the banner picture, which you saw, which hopefully what got you here, the banner picture showed a picture of Randy Meisner, Richie Fiore, and Timothy B. Schmidt, who replaced Randy in both Poco and the Eagles, which is sort of an interesting thing. So... Let me play you the clip of Richie Fiore talking about the last time Apache King. I don't think you've been on here before. Thank you. This is the last time that he's had a chance. I mean, the the headline's ominous because it makes it sound like Randy's dead. He's not. Randy Meisner is very much with us. But this is just the last meeting that he had uh, with Randy. Let me make sure my mic is on. Yeah, it's on. Good. Uh, here we go. Richie Fiore talking about the last time he talked to Randy Meisner. Actually, saw Randy Meisner. Randy Meisner, when's the last time you talked to Randy? Randy came to the uh, the Troubadour when we did the um, uh, the fiftieth anniversary uh, of Deliverin', and it was so so special because not only was Randy there, but Timothy was there, and so my two my two special bass players were right there. <laughs> At the same time, we got some photos together. Um, you know, I, truthfully, John, I haven't, I hadn't talked to Randy in in a long, long time, and seeing him, uh, you know, Randy, Randy's health is, you know, he's he's 
got some issues and struggling and all, but the fact that he came was really so cool. And I know that Timothy was glad to see him at the same time. And, and uh, it, it was just a, a really great evening. Um, I have since, you know, um, done a couple little back porch things and had Randy, you know, do some parts on it. So, you know, it, it was good. I love it when I can see somebody and if I haven't seen them for a while, even if we had issues or whatever, and all of a sudden it's like, wow. And we just, all we want to do is hug each other and, hey, man, it is so good to see you. And that's just how it was, man. Well, that stuff doesn't matter anymore. I think that's a big thing. Yeah. And that stuff was big at the time, but you were all young yeah. and it's not, and you're older now and it does, and it's really small. Yeah, it should be. It should be. And, you know, like with Brandy, it was, and, you know, Timothy and I have an ongoing relationship anyway. He's been such a good, close friend. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to check. I mean, the... that's, how, that's how it should be. We, that's uh, how it should be. we shouldn't be, uh, I, what I want to say, you know, I mean, we, we have poured very sensitive parts of our life into creating something, you know, that, you know, a lot of uh, most people don't get to do that. You know, I mean, we shared our, our the God given talent and gifts that he's given us, you know, and and, and that's a that's a very spiritual thing in and of itself. And we should recognize that and appreciate one another. Um, you know, for for who they are and what they are. I know when Paul Cotton and I were working together because we were young, you know, we and I brought Paul brought Paul into the band, you know, and, and, and loved him. But we did not have the relationship that we had later on in years that, that when, when we were playing together. You know, there it was I don't know whether it was whether it's competition here or there's this or that and the other. But in later years, man, it was just like, man, that's so good to see you and but da 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 and let's go play together. And I took him out with me on tour a couple times and and it, it was it was all good. But that's how it should be, man. At this age, my gosh, man, yeah. let the U Haul go, man. That stuff yeah. you hate. Let that stuff unhitch that thing, man, and put it on the side of the road. Someone had told me years ago, competition breeds itself in young bones. It just does. It's like oh, piss man. and vinegar, you know? Yeah. What do you think of that? I agree with that. And, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go back to talk, talking to Steve Fawson today of Heart, where that I think some of the guys just want to forget the the – I mean, if the Eagles can still – be friends with each other. And even that we've heard the separate limousine story, but if they still can go on stage and do what the fans want them to do, more than the stuff that might happen backstage. Richie Fiore, I'm not a Christian. Richie Fiore is a Christian, believes in living that life as best he can. No one's perfect. And he, um, he wants to give back. He looks at himself as uh, a person that can help out other musicians and his old friends. And in spite of the differences that they might have had, like I said, Randy Meisner, when he was in Poco before the Eagles, wanted, the story was, according to Randy, and a little bit according to Jim Messina, was that he wanted to hear the final mixes. And they were all in there doing it, and they wouldn't let him in. And he said, well, I'm part of the band, and if I can't listen to the mixes, I'm out. So Richie, when I think the first time I talked to him, maybe the second, this is the third, had a slightly different version of that. And so did Jim Messina. So there was three kind of different stories. There were correlated information. But anyway, Randy left and later on joined the Eagles. Left the Eagles and his replacement of Poco replaced him in the Eagles, Timothy B. Schmidt, who was on the cover, as, as uh, Richie just talked about. So that's the thing. And I mean, I always wish Randy well. He gave me a great interview. The longest, I think so far, the longest interview I've seen on the internet with Randy Meisner is with me. Uh, that he gave me, I think, in 2000? Might have been. He talks very bluntly about his days in the Eagles and Poco uh, and stops the interview at one point because he sees a deer and just says, hold on, I just want to capture this moment. I'm going, man, I, I can't see the deer, but I'm sharing this moment kind of with Randy Meisner. Take it to the limit. Too many hands from the Eagles and Poco. Anyway, Richie Fiore's new album, he's very, very proud of this thing. We're going to talk about this in a second with Richie. And this is a thing we're going to do from now on. We're going to try to come on live and present the first clip of the interview like we did, um, uh, we've been doing this week 
uh, with Jason Sheff, you know, his first clip with for him. So anyway, uh, In the Country is Richie Fure's new album. As I mentioned many times in this clip, he's so proud of it. Uh, Val Garay worked on it, and you can go on richiefure.com to, to get information on how you can pick it up. You can get a signed copy. I mean, to get a guy from Poco, uh, Souther Hillman Fure, or... Uh, uh, Buffalo Springfield to sign your album. That says an awful lot. Anyway, let's let's play the next track. Where is it? There he goes. Richie Fiore, new project. He's pretty excited about it. You know, isn't, it, isn't it okay? Seventy uh, eight. Uh, you know, I look at that, and, and I think I've told you before. I'm like, uh, I think it was sixty one the last time we talked. I'm sixty two now, oh. and I I keep looking at the I keep looking at the clock. I keep going, and you know, I think I've told you before. I don't know, man. I've been a radio f- on my 40th year now and I feel like I'm doing my best work. I'm, I'm yeah. Like, uh, and I'm looking at you, especially when you, when I was listening to the last project, the, the, the live, I listened to that. I'm going, man, he's on top of his freaking game. How do you feel about all this? I, I'm excited that I'm still able to get out and do things. And I am doing things now at my, you know what what i want to do I, i'm not going out on tour for long stints of time i'm just doing shows that that i want to do really with my voice right now man sometimes it's one and done <laughs> well you know we don't like i was getting up this morning and i'm going you know what if i don't move a lot during the sleep if i don't have a drink of scotch at night if i have a little drink then i'm usually i i don't move as much but i'm going you know, I, I feel it, but at the same time, uh, you know, you've got guys your own age and you see some of the guys. I mean, it's nurture or nature. There's no guarantees, even no matter if you I know you didn't live the rock and roll lifestyle, but you never know what you got inside. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. No, you're 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 absolutely true. We don't know. And, uh, you know, we take each day uh, day at a time and hopefully, you know, um, we can continue on and just do what. Um, you know, we love to do it in our hearts, and I love to, to make music. I'm so proud of the project that uh, Val Gray and I did together um, that's coming out here in a week or so. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I can still do it. it, it the thing that gets me with, the, with this project <laughs> is that we recorded it in November of 2019. And I mean, we recorded the basic tracks and I, I got most, I got 90% of the lead vocals. Of course, Val had to tweak some of them, but then COVID hit and bingo, here we are three years, almost well, two and a half years later. And it's like, man, I wish I would have been a young guy when this thing got finished rather than an old guy like now, man. <laughs> well, in the hands of Val Garay, yeah, no problem. Tell me about the project. Had a blast doing it. Uh, went to Nashville in 2019, and uh, Val uh, put together a really great band. I had a couple guys that uh, I'd played with before, Chris Lusinger and Dan Dugmore, uh, but he put together the rest of the band. Oh, one of the guys, Steve Nathan, uh, came up to me after we recorded um, the Leanne Womack, I Hope You Dance. He, you know, I played on the original of that. And... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, you know, it it was a challenge. And when Val and I talked about doing the project, um, I'm, I'm thinking this, this sounds like a a fun project to do. And when we got the list all together and the songs were, you know, really selected and we, we, we chose them. My only thought at that point in time was I'm doing songs now that other people have uh, written and created and were big hit records. Um, Are people going to look at the project that we have now in comparison, or are they just going to sit back and say, hey, this is pretty cool? Because what I did, John, was I put together like my, you know how you can put together your own little playlist of uh, uh, songs and stick it in your car? Well, that's what I did with these songs, man. I just made my own little playlist. And uh, truthfully, I really think that we uh, we made the songs our own. You know, I mean, there's um, not one of them that um, I mean, w- we we made them so that you you knew that you, this is the song. It wasn't like listening to a Bob Dylan song that I had to say, wait a minute, did, wait a minute. Oh, I caught that lyric. I know what song that is now. <laughs> so anyway, it, it was a really fun project. All the guys, we did 14 songs in four days. And um, it was uh, it was quite strenuous, but um, 
uh, you know, and then as it, as it unwound, we, we, you know, I would fly out to California uh, to maybe uh, do some background vocals or something, you know, or meet up with uh, Val to, to do some things. And, uh, it, you know, we, we took our time. Um, I wish it could have been, you know, more consistent in how it was released. But, uh, you know, what could nobody, nobody knew what, you know, the parameters were going to be with this shutdown of everything, you know. <laughs> How can people, where do we, where do they go? Because we're really good at this. We send them. I mean, you give me your time. I always make sure that during the interview, we always put it up and we do a little banner for it. And uh, well, where can people get it? Certainly, it, the, the record's going to be available everywhere. It's being released on BMG. And so, you know, they, they have, you know, ways of getting their product, their projects and, and product out to all the stores. But you can go to richiefure.com. And uh, certainly I'll have the, the, uh, the project available. It's coming out on vinyl on June 18th. And then I think it's July 8th or something like that. It's, it's being released on every other format that, that you can imagine. But June 18th is record, um, record store day. Yeah. And so, so I, the vinyl is being released on that day. Okay. Do, um, He's one of my favorite people to interview. I've always loved talking to him. And now the album's in front of my face. There you go. You got to keep moving these things around. But there's the album. It's beautiful. It's such a great project. And as I mentioned over and over again, it's nice to see an artist. I mean, every artist says their new album's their best album. And they feel that way an awful lot. They're not just saying that. But it really is a good project. Uh, um... It's richiefure.com if you want to check it. And the link is in the description of this video. Also in the video, if you want to help us the channel, we're sort of at a, a, a drive right now to sort of raise funds to buy, to build a new computer because our old computer is dying. If we never needed you before, we need you now because it's it's we're at dire straits and we're panicking a little bit of having to build another computer uh, that basically puts together all our videos. So there's a PayPal link if you want to help us out. We'd appreciate that. But let's get to some of the comments. Apache King, never miss any episode about Richie or Poco. And you sure have provided so much content about them. Thank you. We have. Learned so much from your interviews. Thanks so much and respect. Uh, Apache King, thank you. That means an awful lot to us. Joe Roscoe. Uh, Roscoe. Henley, the last remaining original Eagle, is too ego-driven to allow a reunion. <clears throat> well, um... Let me be clear with what you're saying. Um, I'm sure he has a big ego. Uh, a lot of artists do. I'm not making excuses for him, but Bernie uh, um, Bernie Ledden w might be open to coming back. I talked to him after he left the Eagles, History of the Eagles tour. I have an interview. It's on this channel. Randy Miser can't physically do it, so that's not going to happen and there's too much bad blood between Don Henley and Don Felder, it seems. I think Don Felder would do it. I think he'd be open to doing it for sure. So we'll see. Um, everyone loves a good reunion. It's, it's, that's the thing. If you want a signed copy of uh, Richie Fiore's new album, he'll on his website, richiefiore.com, you can also get a signed copy. When you're talking about Selder Hillman, Fiore Band, Buffalo Springfield, Poco member signing your album. It's a pretty cool thing. Looks good on your wall if you want to do that. So I haven't asked for my signed copy yet, but I'm 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 going to. I, this is the third time I've talked to 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 Richie Fiore. We're going to play one more track, uh, and this is going to be the new way. Um, by the way, you you fund the people who help fund us are funding. Uh, they're paying for our eCam every single month because of. Uh, YouTube being like this one month and YouTube, it's just crazy. It's been the craziest month I've ever had on YouTube ever financially. It's nuts. And now we need a new computer. So, you know, there you go. That's why I say we've never asked for anything in eight years. And now we're asking. There's a link. There's a PayPal link in the description of, of this video. Anyway, uh, one more track. And he talks about, uh, um, well, he's famous for being behind the controls, Valgaray. Yeah, in the country, I can't tell you how proud I am of this record. It was a, a blast to make, and to work with Val again was just, uh, it, it was just so special. Uh, for I mean, this guy's two years older than me. We were born on the same day, two years apart. 
And, um, you know, we, we recorded I Still Have Dreams in 1979 together. And so we hadn't done another project. And when he came and said that you want to do this, you know, I was very happy to do it. And I'll tell you what, Val has some of the best ears. I mean, this album sonically and where my voice he's you know it's like sometimes the voice gets lost in a band project and when i first heard some of his mixes i said man now i love where you put the voice he said this is a richie Fure record it's not a richie Fure band record and there it was and so the voice is right out front like i said man i got probably 90 percent of the the tracks live because i was singing when the band was going down and th th there was tweaks on it, but what a fun project. So I hope people will take a listen to In the Country. Uh, all of the songs will be familiar, except for maybe, I don't know, maybe one. Um, one song on there, maybe a song by Buddy Miller called, or Julie Miller actually wrote it called Chalk. And uh, it was just a song that I heard that was very special to me. And it closes out the album. Other than that, great songs, man. Uh, what, what kind of person is Val Garay uh, as composed to uh, uh, other people behind the uh, the console that you've worked with? Um, you know, like, OK, I'll, I'll compare him to maybe John Macy because I've done so much work with John Macy and I love working with John. John is one of those very easy, easy going guys. When Val gets his mind set on something, I mean, he knows what he wants. And I mean, there's no way you're going to distract him from from moving away from that. And, and that's that's really one. I mean, I don't look at that as a negative trait. I look at it, man, this guy knows what he wants and he hears what he wants to hear. I mean, he'll take your um, your input. Obviously, you know, it's it's your record, Richie. And so when you hear what blah, 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 and and, and all but but boy, when, when like in mainly in mixing. You know, when he's mixing something, um, he's he's like focused, and so works out real good, man. Well, I guess I'm back. I guess I'm back on. I guess I should pay attention when I'm playing these. Ever since I realized, I, I knew you could come on live, and when I'm live, I could press a button, and then a video would come over me. I'm not sure why I'm still on the bottom, but I'll figure that out by tomorrow. Uh, once I figured out I could do that and being on live is probably my favorite thing about YouTube, which is something we've just really done the last two years. Um, don't get me wrong. It's good to work ahead and have videos in the can, which we do right now about a month ahead. So if I got hit by a bus, my videos would still be going up for a month. <laughs> what? So anyway, let me put the album cover back up because, you know, Richie, who's one of my favorite people to talk to, uh, has this new album called In the Country, RichieFure.com. He'll sign it for you if you like. Um, uh, check it out if you can. I, uh, I'm very impressed by his music. He's always been, I mean, Buffalo Springfield, Poco, Southern Hillman Fure Band, working with Val Garay. It's called In the Country. So I want to thank him for spending some time with us. This is a long interview. We went over, I think, about a, uh, a, a, an hour and 20 minutes. And we will post this on our sister station, Rock History Book, either tonight or tomorrow. And we'll put clips on it on this channel, Rock History Music. Let me just read some of your comments. I appreciate you guys coming on here and, and chatting with us. It means a lot. Um, MTD... USMC, best music interviewer on YouTube. Always enjoy. Oh, thank you. That's that's very kind. I appreciate you saying that. The, you know, the secret to interviewing is just shutting up. I mean, lately I've been talking a little bit more. I'm not sure why. I've just been talking a little bit between the, the clips. But, but even I look at myself and go, oh, easy now. Shut up. It's not about you. Let him talk. I don't interrupt, though. I try not to interrupt. I usually do this. Sometimes I'll do this to the interviewer. Let me interrupt you. And every every time they stop, I say, yeah, yeah, yeah but. Because sometimes there's a rebuttal thing of going, well, yeah, yeah, but. What about, because I, I try to think of what you're thinking when the artist is saying something of going, okay, that's that's fine, but that's not what they want to know. Um, JT Shark. Hey, JT. Nice to have you on here. I understand why Hanley and Frey felt they were the main members of the band and everyone else were sidekicks. Well, they came up with the best music. 
Uh, best according to who? Well, they have the biggest selling North American album of all time. That's not to say the other guys shouldn't deserve a little bit more. They certainly gave Randy Meisner a, 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 a nice sizable chunk at times, you know? Some people have called Randy Meisner the the George Harrison of the band. I, I don't know if you'd say that, but we'll have more, like I said, tomorrow or the next day, probably tomorrow, because we're kind of on a... Um, thank you for liking our video, but we're really on a, a high note. We're trying to get as many videos out as possible because we're worried our computer's going to die. And uh, and I had a friend of mine said, just buy another one. I said, I can't. Y YouTube's like this. And sometimes it's like this, but YouTube's like this. YouTube pays the bills. And, you know, times are hard for everyone. I understand that. So if you want to donate to help us buy a computer, <laughs> there's a PayPal link in the description. If you've been watching us and you like our videos, I feel like up on PBS. Please donate money, but we I just don't want the computer to die on us because it the, it needs a new screen first of all the laptop because it's flickering and I know that's not a good sign. So and the fan goes on all the time it's a long story. But anyway, thank you for watching this first part. There is links to Richie in the description of this video. Check out the album, you can take a listen to it, you know, and see what you think. If you want a signed copy, you can get a signed copy. Again, I enjoy coming on live. This is just, you know what? If I could be on live for hours every day just to talk and play video clips, I would probably do it. And maybe later that's what I'll do with this channel, right? But anyway, thank you. Uh, you can, If you missed the Randy Meisner part, it's in the beginning where he talks about uh, Randy's health, how Randy's doing. This last meeting, Timothy B. Schmidt was there who was Randy's replacement of the Eagles in Poco and the Eagles, as I've mentioned many times on here. Hello, John. Hey, Mark Burchett. How you doing, man? Uh, uh, Maddie K. USA. Uh, no problem. We're, you know, it'll, this, oh, this thing is going to, I have my radio station computer right here for Bell Media in, in Vancouver. And I was recording what I was saying uh, in, in the Vancouver. It didn't go up, but yeah, I got to, you got to watch that kind of stuff. Hold on. Let's make sure. Good, good. Just leave it there. Don't say too much. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I, you know, I can't say enough how much I enjoy doing live videos. Did I mention that already? It's just my thing, man. It's the radio announcer in me that misses being on the radio live. That's basically what it is. Oh, thank you for su super chatting, Maddie K USA. I appreciate that. Thank you. Twenty dollars going towards our new computer. And if you don't want to super chat or buy a t-shirt or join Patreon the fastest way, and we encourage people to do that because I'm worried about my computer and it dying, is just go on PayPal and you can you can donate money there. Anyway, you don't have to, but if you can, please do. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. I might be back on a little later on because there's lots happening with our interviews. We have so many interviews in the can. Take good care of yourself. I love you guys for supporting our channel. Take good care. Bye.